Uh, excuse me. Yes, uh, a, um, a beer? Is that what you have? Ale? I, I don't... Beer and ale are the same thing. Oh, are they? I see. Well then, yes, an ale, please. Pint? It comes in pints? Well, yes, I suppose, if that's the norm. A pint, please. Uh, how much will that be? Four. Hmm, quite reasonable. Uh, four copper. Oh, ah, well, hmm, these are the smallest coins I have, I'm afraid. I don't typically have much use for money, so these are the only ones I bother to keep around. It's 100 copper to a gold, isn't it? Uh -huh. Well, then, what if I were to take back three gold, and with the one, um, two, three, and ten, Yes, that should buy a drink for everybody in here. What do you say to that? <coughs> Drinks all round on this gentleman here. <laughs> good, good. Ah, <sighs> uh, you there. I hope you'll be partaking. I wouldn't want that to go to waste. My game? I don't have a game. What, you think there's some ulterior motive to me buying everybody a drink? No. That coin was burning a hole in my pocket. I'm glad to be rid of it. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Ah, okay. That was Detect Thoughts, wasn't it? Didn't expect to find another spellcaster in these parts. Touché. Yes, fine. No need to probe any further. I didn't just buy everybody in this tavern a drink out of pure generosity. But no, I'm not doing anything untoward either. Just dispensing a little justice. Trust me, I'm one of the good guys. Hmm. Should I tell you any more? How about a taste of your own medicine first? You're not the only one who knows how to detect another's thoughts. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I suppose I can trust you. We casters do have to stick together, after all, especially around these parts. It's hard to find someone who doesn't treat you with immediate suspicion on learning you're a magic user. Very well. I'm not really a human. No. I'm a tiefling. What you're seeing now is the result of an expertly cast, disguised self spell. It's good, isn't it? Uh, no. Don't bother trying to see through it. I promise you, it's far too strong for- Oh! Oh! Oh, oh my my. You are... adept. Well then, there you are. Take a good look. Drink it in. Fine by me. I'd much rather be seen in my true form than the pinkish blob of humanity I'm forced to take on to get around here without being harassed. Plus, it's a real pain having to remember not to let my horns snag on anything. Hmm, yes, me being a tiefling is indeed relevant. That bartender. He doesn't like my kind completely refuses to serve them more often than not. So? <laughs> uh, I'm glad to meet someone here who sees sense. Yes. Disgusting, isn't it? I came in here for the first time last week, and he chucked me out when I made a fuss about not being served. Of course, the town guard weren't interested. They took his side. So, like I said, this is a matter of justice. Not malice. Oh, I reckon you'll like this. That gold piece I paid with? <sighs> Not real. It's a disc of lead, with virtually no value. The gold sheen is an illusion. It'll wear off in about an hour, by which time I'll be long gone. 
and good luck to the bartender who tries to get a pub full of rowdy drunkards to pay for a drink they thought was free hours after they've already drunk it. <laughs> hmm, no, I wasn't worried he'd closely inspect the coin. If you're stupid enough to be racist, you're probably also too stupid to realise when you're obviously being conned. He made a great mark out of himself the day he refused to serve me. <laughs> yes. Good, isn't it? Petty, maybe, but immensely satisfying. And the best part, of course, is that I can do it over and over again. I'll just disguise myself differently, put on a different act. I've got plenty of those little bits of lead to use. That said, I probably don't have much time for more of this nonsense, fun as it is. Oh, no, this is just a side thing, sadly. Scamming racists is not my full-time profession, much as I wish it were. I'm a spellsmith. Hmm? That's right. Custom magic. Spells for very specific situations that nothing from a book can solve. I'm no wizard. Too rigid. To do what I do, you have to bend the rules. Really take the weave to its limits. You'd be surprised at how many things people want a solution to that normal magic can't manage. There's a lot of money to be made in it. If you can stand the clients. Uh, well... Hmm. I can't really tell you any specifics. All of my jobs have a strict confidentiality agreement, although... Oh, for the latest one, I wouldn't mind breaking that. In truth, it may be the final straw for me. I'm thinking of leaving the business altogether, finding something else to do. Ugh. It's that... Somebody has asked me to do something quite unsavory. I don't have the stomach for it. I may occasionally dabble near the edge of morality, but this is really too far. Oh, don't judge me for it, okay? Like I said, I'm thinking of packing it in, and I'm not actually going to do this. I'm trying to think of a way to sabotage it. Basically, they... Well, they want me to make someone fall in love with them. There's no standard spell for that, and for good reason. It's just not right. It's the sort of thing that has to happen naturally. There are some things that magic shouldn't be used to meddle with, and love is one of them. Uh, I'm glad you agree. Like I said, I'm not actually going to do it. Not exactly as they want, anyway. I don't know. Well, what I'm thinking is, I come up with some kind of spell that, if they were going to fall in love in the future anyway, then it just makes it happen sooner. Just gives them a nudge in the right direction, you know, so that neither of them waste any time. That seems fair to both parties, right? But if they were never going to fall in love without the spell, then it should cause the target to, I don't know, become repulsed by my client or something. Just anything to put the client off. Perhaps worse. Well, he's sure that the object of his affection does love him back, and is just too afraid to show it, but I've no way of confirming that. So, this is the best idea I have. Like I say, it's either this, or I leave the job altogether and do something else. I'd want to tell the client that this was the plan. Or... At least the first part, that it would only work if they aren't lying and the target does actually at least have the potential to love them. Oh gosh, so complicated. What do you think? Hmm, I don't know. Perhaps it would be better to simply turn them down. But, well, I'm already halfway through developing the spell and it's taken up a lot of my time. I wouldn't want it to go to waste. But then another problem is that I also have no real way of testing it. It's getting harder and harder to find good test subjects. I could do with some help, to be honest. But I have no idea who to ask. Uh, 
anyone, really. Anyone with a stomach for it. And the ability to understand what it is they're signing up for. I guess if they have some arcane knowledge themselves, so they can better describe the effects they feel, that would be all the better. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I, I couldn't expect you to... I mean, we've only just met. There's no small amount of risk with experimental magic like this, you know. Things can go terribly wrong. I wouldn't want to experiment on a complete stranger. <laughs> I guess we have read each other's minds a little, but <laughs> I'd still feel bad asking for your help. Even if you do have enough arcane knowledge to know the risks, which, well, it certainly seems like you do. And you do have that air of bravery around you. Hmm. Ah, are you sure about this? I'd feel awful if something went wrong, but I can't deny it'd be very helpful. Hmm. Thinking about it, you're the ideal candidate, really. Clearly adept with magic, brave enough to undergo this experiment, and smart enough to accurately report its effects on you. Plus, we know each other so little that it will really stretch the spell's ability to predict whether we'd ever, uh, fall in love. Which, of course, I'm expecting that to come out negative and for you to feel repulsed by me. But you'll know that that's just the effect of the spell, so that's perfectly fine. No harm will be done. Hopefully, anyway. If I've got the spell right. <laughs> well, the big question mark over everything at the moment is a matter of degrees. How strong will the reaction be if you aren't destined to fall in love with me? I'm honestly unsure. I'm fairly certain I've got the triggers the right way round, so... You're not about to fall head over heels for me or anything like that. It's just... Right. Exactly. How disgusted is disgusted. There's a tiny risk you could try to, you know, kill me. But it really is tiny. Probably nothing to worry about. Besides, I should be able to dispel the magic almost as soon as it's been cast. I'll have time. You know what? Yeah, you're right. I'm being overcautious. That's not like me. I don't know why I said no to you in the first place, come to think of it. I've used test subjects before, without hesitation. Though they're not normally so... Uh, uh, anyway, yes, if you're truly willing, let's do it. <laughs> right now? No, I... Well, we could if you liked, I suppose. I was expecting we'd meet again tomorrow or something like that, but... If you're really raring to go, though, sure. I can't think why not. God, no. Not right here in the pub. That would be insane. Think what could happen if something goes wrong. No, we need somewhere private for this. If you live nearby, do you mind if we use your place? I'd take you to my laboratory, but it's on another plane of existence. Wonderful. Then, oh, let me just finish my drink. No cause for delay, I suppose. Let's be off. Oh, oh lovely little place. Right above an apothecary, too. Handy. My potion making is a little rusty, but perhaps it wouldn't be if I had such ready access to ingredients. Yes, of course, I'm blathering. Sorry. Nervous. Like I intimated earlier, you're not like my usual test subjects. But nonetheless, there's no time like the present. Shall we? Where would you like me? I mean, that is, where would you like to do it? The, the spell. Well, somewhere with some kind of soft furnishings would be best, typically. I have a room with a padded floor at my lab, 
for human tests, in case whatever I'm testing causes loss of consciousness or gives the subject some other reason to fall over, you know. But assuming you don't have a room with a padded floor, well, next to a bed would make a lot of sense, if that's not too... Uh, yeah, of course. The bedroom, then. Yes, yes, this should do just fine. <laughs> it's funny. In any other situation, inviting someone so readily into your room would be... But of course, this is purely for science. Now, um, are you ready? Good, good. Just to recap... In case A, we're expecting you to feel some degree of repulsion towards me, as, of course, we're not destined to uh, fall in love. Were that our destiny, which I'm sure it's not, then, well, that would be case B, and those amorous feelings would be accelerated and manifest immediately. But, as I say, I'm sure that's not going to happen. That would be absurd. So, once I cast the spell, remember that any disgust or repulsion you feel is a manifestation of the spell, and I need you to make note of the degree to which you feel it. Once you've confirmed what you're feeling, I'll dispel the magic, and, all being well, everything should go back to the way they were. Does that all make sense? <laughs> Wonderful. Well, then, let's begin. Uh, there. It's cast. How do you feel? How repelled by me are you? Do you find me physically ugly? Or is it the way I'm speaking that gives you the ick? Or do you just have a general distaste for my character? How about urges? Do you want to run away from me, or attack me, or anything like that? Sorry, I'm blathering again. I should let you talk. How are you feeling? Uh, hello? Do you have anything to report? Why why are you looking at me like that? You look so... I don't know, nobody's looked at me like that before. I kind of like it. Uh, um, right, I'm going to dispel the magic now. I'm not sure this has gone to plan. Okay, it's gone. The spell has ended. At least it should have. Now, how do you... You're still looking at me like that. What is it? Can you talk? Wait, what are you doing? Did it not work? Are you going to attack me? Hello? Oh. oh. I see. It was case B, wasn't it? Right. Right, so... We... In the future, fall in love. We're destined to be together. Okay. Well, uh, good. That's good, then. I mean, I'm glad the spell worked. It's not the result I was expecting, but it does still confirm that... Yes, good. Although, of course, I've dispelled the magic now, so the effect has ended. You can let go. No, I suppose you don't have to, if you don't want to. Um, so tell me, what was it like? What did you feel? Oh, you saw our future together. Our entire future, or just little glimpses? Hmm. <laughs> okay. Damn. That's not the effect I expected, but if it was just little flashes of specific moments, maybe that's not so bad. And tell me, now the spell has ended... How do you feel? 
<laughs> right. You're sure about that? You're sure that you want to go there with me? Then I think it's only fair that I cast the spell on myself, too. Otherwise, things seem terribly unequal. Plus, if we're destined to fall in love, well, I want to see it for myself. You know how to dispel magic, I assume. <sighs> of course you do. Well, then, I'm going to cast it on myself. I'll dispel it myself, too, if I can, but you might need to be on standby to do it for me. Ready? God. Oh, God. Dispelled? Yeah, okay. Let's do the... 